you think how much work you did. Um, I, I still like to think when you look at, at mm. the UN and all the work mm. that you've done there, mm. you must feel satisfied that you have affected um, enormous change over the course of your career. Look, I've gone away from everything I've done feeling proud of it. Now, and I think a test of it is you know, how much endures. I mean, I lost election here, obviously, in 2008. But fundamentally, how much of the groundbreaking legislation or policy ever changed? Not much. Mm. Things that were very controversial, they haven't changed. So, yeah, that's a legacy. Yeah, we see what you did to the political landscape of New mm. Zealand and showed us what women in power can mm. do. And yet we have women in power answering ridiculous, ridiculous questions. Ridiculous questions. <laughs> that blow the mind in 2017. How disappointing do you find that, especially coming home to, to, to where you made such a difference? Well, I, I'm outraged by it. And uh, the tweet that I did on it when I said, are these people proud of themselves, went absolutely viral, I think 111,000 impressions, which is big for basically a New Zealand uh, issue. Uh, so, and, but the humiliating thing for New Zealand is that idiotic questioning then went right through the global media, making New Zealand look like a country of dorks that couldn't accept young modern women making their own decisions and not having to have that kind of ridiculous questioning. So I think... You know, time for women to get really mad about this sort of stuff and say, this is just below par. Is there any one thing that has made you more proud than anything else over the course of your amazing career? Well, I think I have been a you know, glass ceiling breaker, and I think that set the bar and aspirations so much higher for younger women. And if I can encourage other people to aim for the top and follow their dreams and you know, have confidence in themselves that they can do it because Helen could do it and where did she come from? Out of a little farming community in a four-room school and you know, she got there. You can do it. Believe in yourself. So if you can leave that feeling around for younger women, I think that's, that's something to be proud of. You finished up in April, I think, didn't you, at the yep. UNCP? And, and looking back at last year, how do you feel about uh, and how would you describe the process now for you? Um, looking back at it, and what did you learn from it? Well, it wasn't a fair fight, no. and okay, that's life. You know, most fights aren't fair, but the extent to which it was loaded was something we could never have anticipated. If you had anticipated, you might not even have bothered. But there I was. I'd been a long-term leader in New Zealand. I think quite a successful prime minister. Uh, I was the third highest person in the UN. If I couldn't have a credible bid at it, who on earth could? And that's really why I stuck in even though the odds became impossible because I thought women can't quit. We've got to take this on. I may not make it, but the fact that I hung in there and other prominent women hung in on the contest hopefully will make it easier next time for a woman to step up. Do you see a future where that will happen? Look, if the 10th Secretary General elected, in effect by the five permanent members, is a man, I think the UN will be a laughing stock. Mm. And do you see, even now looking back, that that race that you had and the bid that you made and the enormous conversation that you generated by doing mm. so mm. has had a positive impact on, on, I guess, on the hierarchy within? No, I think they are mm. unmoved by it. But I think what has been positive, and this comes out in the audience reaction to the film, is it's making a lot of women very angry. And actually a lot of men pretty angry as yeah, well. When, when they look at it, people are angry. And so I say, don't get mad, get organised. You know, women have to get organised. We've been through an era, we're baby boomers and you know, old, old feminists, we've been through a post-feminist era where a lot of younger women thought, oh, the battle's won, what are they going on about? Mm. Clearly it is not won. And that's a message of that film. So if the film and my campaign and the campaign of the other women who are in uh, mobilises women to try to get the last mile, then we've achieved something. Do you do it again? Would you throw your hat in again in five years? Look, I think in exactly the same <laughs> set of circumstances I, I would, would have, have, have run last time. Look, we don't know whether the current Secretary General will go one term or two. Mm, that's uh, true. So, you know, there's a, there's a point at which age is obviously <laughs> against you. Um, but I think we need to identify who is a likely, very strong woman candidate and pile in behind that candidate. 
Interestingly, you were just talking about I Facebooked or tweeted you. I mean, social media has been a huge part of, I mean, so mm. many followers um, mm. across the social platforms. Yeah. Uh, and I think there was the conversation within the film uh, that obviously the new SG, I don't think, uh, barely had heard of social media. Uh, how important is that to connect with people that can affect change? It, it, it's incredibly important for bringing particularly younger generations into engagement with these global issues and institutions. I've used social media a tremendous amount. In fact, if it had been around when I was a politician in New Zealand, <laughs> it would have been very different sort of politics, but it, it really wasn't. Uh, so I see it as having great power, but unfortunately you can win a social media war in a contest like this, but it does not move five permanent members. And here's what the UN has to reflect on. Will it continue with what is a highly undemocratic selection process or will it open up like the World Health Organization just did to a proper election mm. by all the member states of the new Director General? Will that happen? Well, the WHO did it. I think the UN General Assembly should assert itself and say it's not good enough just to have the Security Council, basically led by five permanent members, make this decision and give us, in effect, one option which we have to accept. Mm. I think uh, the film raises the issue of why. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Why, when there are all these quality women candidates, were they not sort of polling among the top group? Why? Mm. But also, why ha women are 51% of right. the human population. Why are we not educating our girls? Because educated women have less babies and that helps towards population control. It's just like... There's so many whys around the gender issue that mm. are almost unfathomable. Yeah, and it's a really simple question that it never seems to get answered. If you took that wheel, you were saying, Helen, going round and round and round. Um, I think I get the sense you do have an understanding um, of the, the place that you have and since mm. leaving New Zealand mm. and going to the UN, then how proud so many of us are of you mm. and how inspirational that is. Does that ever give you a, an, does that ever overwhelm you from time to time? I get a feeling it doesn't. I think it must just come with the territory, but. Yeah, no, it, it comes with the territory, mm. but uh, then you also want to you know, try to live up to people's expectations. So, and, and just keep out there and keep, you know, on at the messages that people have found powerful and inspiring. No, I, I thought, look, I think it's a very powerful film. I think it has strong messages. It does mobilise people. It sends them out saying, you know, we shouldn't put up with that. We're going to do something. So, yeah, that's great. Got people talking and reflecting. How many stars are you giving your own film, Helen? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. no I, 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 I nominate my father as best supporting actor. <laughs> I, I, I'd, I'd, I'd go with that nomination. <laughs> that was such a fascinating insight into yeah. here you are at the UN, one of the most powerful women in the world, still in Waihi, filling up margarine containers with yummy food for your dad. It was really very moving. It was a, is that something you've literally done for, for many years? Yes, mm. because um, my father was widowed six years ago and my mother died, which was a very sad time for us. And I and my sisters, of course, all were worried. How would dad cope? Dad is very resilient and still charging along at 95. Yeah, but <laughs> you see, if I didn't do those meals, well, he might fry a sausage. Mm. You know, it wouldn't be very nutritious. You can't live on a fried thing <laughs> each night. So I thought if I put the meals in the freezer, it's something easy. And he does do vegetables, but he wouldn't do meat properly. And you have to have protein. You just do. I wondered why Helen was so... In, in, involved and, encur and, and encouraged in her job because she'd taken the job for the second time. Big global job in development at the UN. And I thought, Helen isn't the type to be sitting, smiling and waving. <laughs> so what's she doing? Right. And did you just pick up the phone and say, Helen? I hey. did. I found Helen's phone number from a mutual friend <laughs> <laughs> um, and rang Helen and I said, I'd really like to make a documentary about you. And Helen said, yes. And then I said, well, I'll send you an email. And I sent an email, and it was a long, carefully thought out, I must have creative control, This, I will need this. <laughs> you know, you, you know, pointing out the downside of having cameras about. And waited and got no reply for at least a fortnight. Mm. And I thought, oh, she doesn't like the idea. So. I then Facebook tweeted you, Facebook, I didn't tweet you, I Facebooked you, mm. I messaged mm. you, 
I got an emoji of a girl with pink hair on a motorbike <laughs> that said, that said, you know, my, my message said, did you get my email? And you said, got it. And I thought, oh, she has got the email, and I waited another couple of weeks. But what you meant was, got it. Yeah. I'm on my motorbike. I've dyed my hair pink. I'm ready for the cameras and to I've, roll. Now, I've now found out that Helen had moved on to the extent that she barely remembers any of this, <laughs> which was a really big thing for me. And is this how it translates for you, Helen? Is that how the process works? You just thought, I'll say yes, and then I'm done, and then we're off and we're... Well, I, I thought about it, but you know, at that point, the Secretary General job wasn't in prospect mm. and uh, Gaylene was clearly interested in the sort of things I was doing in development so I thought a good opportunity to tell the story that positive things can be done. Yes the world's a mess but every day you can get up and make a difference in development. Can you give us an intimation of what's next? Well, well the problem is that there's too much to do. <laughs> For you, I'm that, sure. I think that's been the story of my life that, that honestly that I mean the emails, the phone calls, it's, it's just kind of gone crazy. Uh, so I have to pick and choose. I get an enormous number of speaking invitations. I'm not looking for full-time work. I've had you know, half a century of that. That's enough. Uh, but uh, there are many requests to do this, do that, come here, go there. So I can pick and choose and enjoy myself a bit. Is there something mm. deep inside you still want to achieve? You've got so much time to do it. Well, what I have is a major public platform. Mm. Um, a well-known figure. I have huge social media uh, reach. And so if I have something to say, it will have an audience. Mm. So what I find I'm speaking mostly on, if you look at my social media, sustainability. I'm very, very big on environmental uh, sustainability, wildlife protection, climate change issues, sustainable development, poverty eradication, peace and justice, and gender equality. Those are the things that I'm talking about. Goodness, if I can get through the day and pick Max up from daycare, I'm super happy that I've achieved something. <laughs> so I'm feeling pretty rubbish around you right now, Helen. <laughs>